All right, everyone. So uh, today, then, is the beginning of the end of the class because the class is three weeks long. Uh, simply because our month of, of uh, November is shorter than the usual. So on this week, we've got a few things to accomplish to wrap up our app. Um, I've got a virtual device running and my real Android device, so I'm ready to use those. And here's what we need to do to set ourselves up. Um, if you open the network folder, so I'm going to open computer, and then go over to the classroom data, drive Z, We'll go to our class, Campus Android 3. And if you don't have a copy of last week's pouch project, there it is with last week's date. You'll need a copy of that. Also, I've got my SDCE start. That is the folder, that is the project that we ended up with on the last day of last month. So if you don't have that, you might get a copy of that, but if you've got your own copy of that, remember we've been working in our apps folder. We were working on our app last month. This is the final version that we ended up with in class. I believe it's the exact thing that we ended up with in class last time. I don't believe I changed it, but might as well get that copy of it just to be safe. Um, and lastly, I've also got a handout here, Campos 9, sheet number 9 signing your final APK. The APK is our Android package file. Um, so those are the three that you need. You need a copy of those on your desktop or flash drive. I'll turn the printer on a little bit later once we get to the part about that handout. We're not there yet. So on my flash drive, I copied I've got my apps folder on my flash drive, and in my flash drive, I flash drive, I copied that file from the network in there, which I'll just name my my SDCE. I don't want extra typing, so it doesn't matter. But you need a copy of the work from the network folder, which is from last month, the my SDCE project on your flash drive. That project was something that we've been working on together. Um, and since it's the second to the last day of class, this is basically the last time I'm going to give you a copy of that, because by now you should have your own version of it. Because this is what we need to do. You need to have a copy of the, of the Android project. Go ahead and open the folder. And we're going to edit this config XML file. Looks like we haven't touched it in a while. This has got a date of October the 20th, almost a month old. So we're going to edit the config XML file to remind us what's in that. This is a file that we're, it's easy to forget because we're usually working in that www folder, right? We're working with the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. But we need to edit this one once in a while. So go ahead and right click edit with notepad the config.xml file. It should be familiar. So a few things we're going to change here. Line number two, com.jones.mysdce. Put your last name there so that it's your project. You see widget id equals com.jones. Change that to your last name. doesn't really matter, but I would like to change the version number. This is version 1.2015.10.13. Let's put today's date as a version number. So version 1.2011.10.13. Um, Android version code, we're going to keep that as number one because this is still the first version that we're going to upload to the app stores. Later, when we make changes, we're going to change that to number two, and that's going to change as whole numbers. This is technically a string, so that can be anything. And I'm putting the date, today's date, the day I compiled it. Everything else on line two is fine, line three. Um, let's also change that slightly. 
it was, the app is simply being called MySDCE, but let's also put your last name here. So put your last name as a real, uh, you know, real spelling and spaces and such. That's going to be the text that, that appears below the icon. Recall that. So you might have already had a version of the app on your device. This is now going to be, you know, the home stretch, the final version of it. So. Uh, here we're going to put your last name because if you're using my file, it doesn't have your name. S description is fine, the unofficial SDCE app. Number seven and eight, obviously, then you want to put your info here. You can put a real email address uh, if you'd like or make it up. Uh, seven, put in an email, a web address. If you have your own website, you can put that in. You can put in your Facebook. Twitter, whatever, just any kind of website that differentiates you. And number eight, your company, your app developer company name, which you can make up right now. As soon as you make it up, you're a company. So fill in lines seven and eight. We are going to go through the whole process of creating the App Store and uploading it. It's optional for you to upload, although it's completely free to do so, and you'll have the bragging rights to say, hey everyone, friends and family, download my app. It's on the App Store, for real. You're, it's optional for you to do that. You don't have to. Um, I would recommend you do go through the whole process that I'm going to go through, and then later, if you'd like, you can delete the app or the account, but to get the full picture, I recommend you do go through the whole process. Besides that, everything else, uh, everything else is good. We just needed to put our own info at the top. So let's save that config file. Well, that href there, I had Cordova.io and Yeah, that was. You should change that to, to be your own web presence. That was the name of. Um, but we don't have a website. Anymore. Well, um, you can make it up, or you can put a, a Facebook address or a Twitter address or anything. You can put DarthVader.com. I won't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. DarthVader.mil. So. Um, Okay, so we're going to save the config XML file. And I'm going to go back to the folder. Back to the folder uh, of the main project. Open up the www folder. So here's our project from uh, last month. What I want to do now is also open another folder, another window, that is, so open another computer window, where, wherever you have your, your pouch project, that one that you either have been working on or that you got from my network folder. So I put mine on my flash drive. You want to go to the pouch project that you got out of the network folder. 2015, 11, 12. Open that folder. Now I'm having a flashback. At the end of the day, I remember, uh, the end of last Thursday, it was anticlimactic, wasn't it? Weren't we doing something and I said, we've got seven minutes, should we go home or keep messing with it? And you guys said, keep messing with it. And then it didn't work. Um, it did get fixed. Uh, I think, Joe, you were one of the last ones here, right? It, you were one of the last yeah. ones, Julia. What did we, what did we do? Remind me. We fixed it, right? Yeah, you did, and it's under old HTML. Old was the one before we fixed it, and index is the one that's fixed. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought they said they were my fault. Does anyone remember what what the problem was? Um, vaguely, I believe. Well, I'll just open the code. Uh, what was the thing? Uh, something. Oh, I remember. Yeah, uh, line 150, we moved that anonymous function code into its own defined function update class populate, and we weren't able to get this to work. Remember that? Well,
quick look at Stack Exchange and I got the answer. Basically, line 150 has been updated, so you do want to copy from the network folder. The change has been that we got, we we're passing this object into the function. That's where we use it. We're saying update class populate, use the this object. And then so the function is saying, okay, update class populate is going to expect some object called this object. And then now we use it here, this object dot find. Instead of we had remember dollar this. So instead of dollar this find, dollar this find, dollar this find, this is this object, which we are passing this into it down here. So that was the that was the change. This we have it here, which we're passing into the function, and then this replaces it, and then that made it work. So now the whole point of that was to put that into a function that we can reuse as necessary instead of leaving it in the anonymous function that only works when we click on that one button. Putting it as a function, as a as a defined function, we can use we can reuse that code in other parts of the app if we needed to. But anyway, all of this is our code of the project we've been working on for the last two weeks. We're going to need to do a few things. We're going to need to um, copy some files from last week's project into the app, and we're going to need to copy some code from some of those files into our project. We're also going to need to create um, some screens in our in our app to show this stuff. So um, the way we'll do it is I've got my folder of last week's project and today's app. We're going to drag the pouch uh, JavaScript library, drag it from last week into today's project. Drag that JavaScript, either copy it and paste it or drag it, doesn't matter. I'm gonna copy it. So we need that pouch file in, into our app project. Next, I'm going to edit the index of the pouch project and the index of the my SDCE project. We need to open the code, the index files of both projects. So I've got Notepad, and on my left, I've got the Pouch project, and on the right, I've got the SDCE project. Yes? Where should the Pouch file be put into? Which folder is that? Into the www folder of the, okay. of the project. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so can you repeat it again? Uh, yeah, you just need to copy uh, the pouch.js file from the pouch example. Uh, how can I have it? I'm sorry, just why I was looking at it. <laughs> you don't have it? Yeah. Well, maybe when you dragged it over, it moved it instead of copying it. Excellent. How come I don't have that? Oh, now I have it. That is the one. Excellent. Actually, I was looking for that. Yes, because you're editing the pouch file. You want to edit both or that one. Just the two index files. So that's the index for pouch. Let's open the index for the app. Which is your version? Oh. Where do I need to copy this to? You're not copying the index. No, it's your version. Uh, it, it is my version, but we're not going to edit it, so it's okay that you've got it here because this is your project. Uh, so, so you do copy it over, put it down, all that's going to do is 
We're gonna we're gonna open it, edit it. We're not gonna edit it. Do you want to open that one from that? And do you want to open your? Do you want to open your index? Let's click on menu just to alphabetize them. Let's see the index. So let's edit that one. We just need to pull them both. Okay, so we want to open both index files. Can you ask like a quick question? Yes. They put over the JS, we never gonna need it. Cordova.js or Codica.js? No, the Codica, C O C D O. Cordova. Because I saw on your website, it's on your like four years old, but I think it's There is, in the index file, there is a reference to a Cordova file. But we never have to touch it. Whenever we do Cordova build or Cordova run or Cordova emulate, it puts the Cordova file into the project as necessary. So we're not going to have to import it in the file. No, we're not going to. We're not going to see. We're not going to see any Cordova JS file here. It does it for us. It does for us. Because I saw on your GitHub that you post some your code in your GitHub plugin, and I saw yes. on Cordova JS two years back. That, um, yeah, the old one of it. You don't need to do it anymore because now it's included in the project. So I need to update that repository. Okay, so on the left, I've got the pouch project. On the right, I've got my index for my app. Uh, the way the pouch project works is on line 7. That's the reference to the pouch JavaScript library. We need to copy line 7 into our index of the app because then the app will be able to use the pouch commands. So on line 7, let's copy that. That's the script to access pouch. And then on the index file of the app, let's see, we need to put it, um, let's see, at the end of the document. Yes, go all the way down to line 270 or so. That's where we've got our references to our JavaScript libraries. Um, we'll put it right after... Um, right after line 269. Let's create a new line 270 and paste it. So we've got jQuery loading up to our project first with all of that power of dollar symbol, blah, blah, blah. Then we've got jQuery mobile so that we can use data role page, data role header, etc. Then we've got pouch so we can use all of that db.put, db.get. Then we've got Cordova, which is the stuff about um, geolocation and vibrate and all of that. Then we've got our own custom JavaScript code library. That's the order of things here, and that's why we have it in that order. Logically, this needs that. To work with, basically that's the order I wanted it. Um, the the visuals of the pouch project are basically everything in the body from body line 10 to 19, so about 19 lines. That's the visual part. We need to find a place somewhere in our app to display that. Uh, I'm just going to run the project very quickly in Firefox just to remind me what it looks like. I don't have to code over build or anything like that. I just want to see it very quickly. Uh, I think a good place maybe where do we want this? About map customize. Right. And we'll keep it on the home page. We'll have a um, oh, there's that take take photo thing that we don't need anymore actually at the moment. Uh, so we'll add a button on the home page of the project to load a screen for the person to be able to input those those class that class information. 
So let's see on the index file of the app. Line uh, 70. Line 70 on the app's index file. We have that button. Data roll button icon camera. There's the button to take photos, and there's the div to display the photo. Um, we're not really going to use that photo taking functionality in this app. So I'm going to comment out those lines. So I'll start my comment, HTML comment. So it's going to be greater, uh, less than, exclamation point, dash, dash, space. The comment starts. And then at the end of line 72, don't forget to close it, dash, dash, greater than. So we'll just comment out those that ability to take the, the photos. It doesn't really do that anything that interesting. We don't have time to really make that impressive. We've got this database thing that's pretty useful. So let's comment out line 71 and 72. And we're going to create a button here so that a person can save their classes so that they can get to the pouch stuff. So we will create the A tag. We'll create a button just like line 71, basically. This will be, um, we'll call it my class list. This is going to be a button my class list. Therefore, we need href. Um, we'll put the pound symbol for the moment. And uh, data roll. Remember this data roll button to turn that plain link into a button. Data roll button, uh, data roll icon. Um, what kind of button can we have here? For the moment, we'll just use star. We can look them up which which options we have and maybe choose a better icon. But uh, we have we have a button now that'll be called my class list. The person clicks this, they'll get a brand new screen that then will display. Um, that pouch db input fields. Oh, and I also want a transition. Data role transition. I'm sorry, data transition equals. And for this one, I want to do slide up. That's one word together. So what's going to happen is this new screen is going to slide up from the bottom. And that new screen will have those input boxes. In order for this button to send us to a screen, now we'll go back to the href to tell it to go to a screen, which doesn't exist yet. We haven't created that screen. But I'm going to back up at the start of that line and say href pound um, my class list. Don't forget the pound symbol. The unique ID. So just to show that in total, that's my line 70. It's a new button. A href pound my class list. Data roll button, data icon star, data transition slide up, and the text my class list. If you take a quick look in Firefox, you can run it from Firefox. It won't fully function yet. You can do run Firefox. There's a button, my class list with a star. You can change the styling of it a little later, but I just want to have a button. It doesn't do anything yet, of course. There is no my class list screen yet. Here's my code so far. Does everyone have that? Okay. 
So if we're referencing a, a screen called my class list, we need to create a screen. Um, we can create it anywhere within the project, but I'm going to add it at the very end just because I sort of visually in the code, all my main screens are near the top and then my sub screens are near the bottom. And so I'm going to add another sub screen. Let's go all the way to the end. We should add a comment here, line 267. That's the end of some section. I have to go back to find out what section it is. But let's make a new section on line 268. Remember, our sections are our different screens of our project. So, new section slash section. Um, section needs data role uh, page. And data uh, and uh, ID equal to the to the uh, ID that we created a moment ago. My class list, no pound sign in that case. So now at least the button has a place to go to once we click on it. The section will have a header. Data role header. And um, we'll put a heading one here, H1, H1 tag, and we'll call it again my class list. That way there's something visual on screen for the user to see. The other mentions of my class list have been code. My class list. The text will be displayed in the header of this brand new page. And then we'll have a content section, which is article. This is the one spot here where they're changing the consistency which is not, it used to be data role equals content, which I liked, but now it's class equals UI dash content. Just to confirm, uh, oh, role main class UI content, according to the documentation. I'm just going to put a little placeholder text there. I'm just creating a brand new section for my class list. Let's save it and run it. You should be able to click on the, the button, and then this brand new screen will slide into view, which will be empty, of course, and then we'll migrate over the code from Pouch into this project. save it and I'm gonna see how mine works hopefully it'll work I'm going to I've got my button my class list I'm gonna click slide up and then we've got the text oh I need a way to get back I, I see here we're on this screen but there's no way to get back um, so what we'll do is we need to add on to line 269 the header we've got data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. That gives us that simple back button. Let's add this to line 269. Data roll header, data add back btn true. So we get a back button. Can we add two 
and then the other one maybe I will go to sign in or something in case somebody wants to open the actual name here. In the header, uh, that would work. We can create a, a nav bar instead, or we could put this uh, this button will automatically go on the left side of the header. We can add another link, like after my class here, and it'll add it to the right side of the top bar. No, no, okay, no. Yes, two different ways: nav, or we can simply add another link. Okay. So let's pause here. Let's see if mine's working, and we'll see that everyone's is working. Uh, we're going to have my class list. Click that. We've got the slide up. My class list. Back. Takes me back. Does that work for everyone? Anyone need a little help? So we've got this placeholder screen under article. We've got that design and, and those elements from uh, the pouch project on the index file of pouch. Right, my, my pouch code. And as I said, everything between body is, is that uh, project. So let's take line 10, starting from that H1 in the pouch index, line 10 down to line 18, uh, uh, 19, 10 to 19. Let's copy those lines and we'll paste them into line 273 of the my class list section article there. Where from the pouch file, the stuff in the body, which is line 10 to 19, where the H1 starts, and then where that div, the result, placeholder ends, copy 10 to 19, and then on our apps index file, on mine it was line 273. Tab these things over a little bit just to make it look something like that. I tab them in so that they're indented to the article. There is a div, the end of the form, an H1 pouch database. Uh, no, that's not for the users to, to, to know. Right there, we'll change that. Actually, line 273, that should be an H2 because we used H1. We already used H1 for the top header right here. We'll call this something else. Um, what should we call this? This whole screen is for a person to save their classes, like a gold or something. Um, what should we put up here? This is telling people, what should we tell people up here on the top of the screen what this is for or about? Maybe, um, save your classes. Let's save it and run it. Click your button. This screen should slide up, and we should see those input boxes. And they will automatically be updated and look pretty nice because jQuery Mobile is in effect. My class list slides up. Look at that. Cool drop shadows, um, glows. The buttons look good here. We can add icons to those now. Remember, now that we've got jQuery Mobile, we can update these buttons to get data icons. Let's do that. Uh, 278, 279, 280. We've been used to href, having hrefs with data, icon, whatever. We can add data icon to these inputs as well, even though they're not the hrefs that we've seen before. So we can add to line 273, data icon, the clear button, um, I think it's called cancel. That'll give you that little cancel symbol, that little circle with a little cross out. Add class, and show class, uh, let's see, data icon for the add class, uh, we'll do check. This will create a check mark. 
I believe. And then for the show class data dash icon, um, I think we've got one called list. Oh, what I also want to do right now, they take up a lot of space. Each one button takes up a whole size of the screen. I want to keep the buttons short so that they only take up as much space as they need. Anyone remember what we add to that to keep the button compact? Data-inline equals true. Let's add data-inline true to the three of them. So those buttons will still behave the same, but now they look nicer, thanks to jQuery Mobile. We've got the data icons and the data inlines so that they feel a little bit more app-like. Okay, uh, I need to double check those names. I guess it's not data icon check and list. Let me take a quick look. I don't have them all memorized. Jquerymobile.com. Let's see, the cancel icon. There we go. Uh, we can do delete or cancel, which is called forbidden. Okay, so we'll call actually instead of uh, on line two seventy eight instead of data icon cancel, we'll do forbidden. That'll do that little circle with a cross out. Forbidden. That's on line 278, uh, 280. I guess list is not the one that I was thinking of. I was thinking of... Bars. What's that? Bars. bars, that's what I was thinking of. Uh, yeah. Bars. Yeah. I want to do bars. Not the one with drinks. This mm -hmm. is a different kind. Bars. I have some icons that are a little nicer. So save and run that. Just confirm that those icons appear. The buttons won't work yet, of course. We haven't brought the JavaScript over, but uh, we're set, we're setting up our project. And I think we're also going to add a grid here so that these buttons line up nicely. Right now they're kind of kind of all over the place. Well, it kind of looks nice. But just to confirm that they do line up, because let's say we've got a wide kind of screen like that. We're going to have an empty space over there. Uh, let's see about perhaps uh, putting in a grid so that they stay centered on the screen. Create a new line above 278 so we can create a div and then add a div after those three input fields, those three buttons. So I added a new div, close the div, so new div on 278, close the div on 282, and I indented those just to show that these items or inside that div.
And then we need, inside the div, this is one of those cases that it's not a data role, it's a class. UI-grid-a. Confirm. Yes. Um, so that div now has a class, UI grid A. This is going to be a grid that only has one row. And each of these is going to be a column, but each of these also needs a div to divide it into each particular column. are UI blocks A and B. Okay, so that means line 279 we need another div to wrap around the first button and that div will need a class UI dash block dash A. This is some jQuery mobile stuff that we've uh, seen a, a while ago, and I'm just re refreshing my memory by going back into the code earlier where we used it, and I'm building this grid so I can have an equal amount of space and lined up on screen. So if my first button is block A, my second button will need also a div pair block B. And my third button will need a div pair, block C. I'll we'll have column A, column B, column C in one row, which is UI grid A. It's not quite named that logically, but that's what that does. Grid A means one row. Grid B would be two rows. Grid C, etc. More rows. Then we've got block A, first column. Block B, second column. Block D, fourth column. Another div. Another div to wrap around the second button. Class UI block B. And you should do the same thing then for the third one. So create another div with class UI block C. So looking at my CSS code quickly, I see that we did develop a, uh, a way to align the buttons inside the grid. 
So let's back up to line uh, 279. We've got div class UI grid A within the quotes. Then we will add grid align center. This was some CSS that we wrote last month to align buttons inside of a grid to the center. And so be careful here. You want to add that class spelled like that, capital A, capital C. You want to add that class inside the quotes, a class, line 278, space between grid A and grid align. Question. We were using center div for for some things, okay. and I believe it would still apply. But we created another class just to attach to wherever we use a grid, okay. which technically I believe the div align center would still work. Let's see, uh, I'm going to run that, my class list, those two are centered, but that one isn't. That's something cosmetic. We'll get back to that. I want the functionality to work, but um, we'll figure it out. These are supposed to be... What's that? Does yours work? Does anyone else work? Do your buttons line up center? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, mine's way off over here for some reason. It's just cosmetic. So if it looks good for you... Yeah, it's okay. If it doesn't look exactly how I envision it, which is all on one line, nicely aligned, we'll fix that a little later. It's just cosmetic. I want the functionality to work, so I'm going to move on. Um, I want the buttons to actually do something. Right now, if I try to add class, nothing happens yet. So that's next. Uh, back to the HTML file here. What I want to do is before we leave the HTML file, because now we're going to bring over the JavaScript. Before I leave the HTML file, let's back up all the way to the top of the document to line 14. Line 14 is that CSP, Content Security Policy, the one that makes your app very secure, but you know, gets in our way sometimes to let us do a few things. So as I was testing this out to make sure it worked, um, we need to add an extra line at the very end of line 14, so remember the way this works is what can we do, what can we not do? We've got default source. Uh, this is supposed to encompass anything that we don't explicitly mention, but I see that it never really works that way. Uh, so there's default source, blah, 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 and then semicolon. And then we're saying style source. Those are CSS files. We're saying let us use any self-contained CSS files and any that are it, that are unsafe inline that are added to the document semicolon and we're saying media source which i would assume is media like graphics and such aster or uh, star which is anything that's a wild card let any sort of media be used so we've got that those were default then we had to add um, 
frame source astra, uh, star dot sdce dot edu that was in order for us to let us open the in-app browser so that it would open up the SDCE college addresses. You're going to need one more here. Semicolon after sdce.edu, but make sure you're still inside the quote space. And this time we're going to uh, add connect dash src space. And here it seemed to work by adding a uh, asterisk, that's an asterisk, right? Adding an asterisk, which is shift 8. So in theory this is supposed to, when I was testing this, it would, it would, it would, pouch would not work. I looked at the console and it said, there's an element here that violates the content security policy. So I, I looked that up and it looks like if we say it this way, content connect source, we are able to connect to the pouch database. So this, this whole line is that one that's supposed to keep us safe from a bunch of, you know, hacks and problems and such. But it's very strict. So one way to avoid all of this is delete line 14, but then we're not, we don't have a, as a safe app anymore. So I think that'll cover it here. Let's save that. And just to confirm at the very end, the syntax of this is kind of weird. It's not consistent with other things. We have something... We have some sort of declaration and then attributes and then semicolons. Uh, we've been used to some declaration with a colon and then the attributes and semicolon. But when they invented this thing, no one had the idea to use things that have already existed. So that's why the function, the syntax of this looks different than what we're used to. The first time you look at it, it's like, what am I looking at? There is a colon here that's one of the very few places, data gap. But notice there's also no commas in between these things. There's no colon. They're just separated with semicolons. Why? When this group was inventing this thing, they said, okay, great. And no one, no one protested. I don't know. So that's how that syntax is. Go ahead and save. And if you switch back over to the index file of pouch, the rest of the, the, rest of the functionality of the app is JavaScript. From line 21 down to all the way down to 150, so that's 130 lines of JavaScript code. All of that we're going to need. Not the script tags, because we're going to put all of this into our codica.js file. Remember we've got that waiting codica.css and codica.js file. So we want to separate each of these elements. HTML code in an HTML file, CSS code in a CSS file, JavaScript in a JavaScript file. So let's copy everything between lines 21, starting with var db new, copy or select all the way down to line 150, where it where it has the very last on click the result. Not the slash script, but line what, uh, 21 to 50. Copy that. 21 down to 150. And from our project folder, we need to open the codica.external.js file. codica.external.js. You want to open that in Notepad++. In our codica file, we've got uh, at the very beginning, line 3, document event listener device ready. So that's waiting. That's for Cordova, in order for Cordova to work. The PouchDB documentation says that if you want to use a pouch project in a in a Cordova project, its code must be in the on device ready function, which starts on line five. On device ready is launched from line three. We've got document add event listener device ready. When the device is ready, when it's loaded Cordova, run the on device ready function, which is defined on line five, and that's got this other stuff that we've already set up. We can add it anywhere. I'm going to add it at the end of the function. 
It starts on line 5 and it ends on line 41. So on line 41, make yourself a new line. 41, 42 now ends the on device ready function and then other stuff is still there. We're going to paste all of those 130 lines of code on line 41. So now on line 41, my, <coughs> my pouch code starts. There's var db going all the way down then to line 170. Is that the result on click? The curly brace then ends the function, and then the rest is still there. Because this has been added to on device ready, we will not be able to simply run uh, Firefox anymore. It's it's now got code that is not plain web code. It's it's app code. So we will have to now uh, run this in an emulator, our virtual device, or. Uh, the Cordova web browser. So make sure all your files are saved, especially the index and the Codica file. I'm going to do save all. And we need to open the the command prompt now. We need to get back to that, the command prompt. The command prompt, remember the shortcut here. I'm in my folder of my uh, flash drive. This is the project. I want to sh hold shift on the keyboard and right click my project, my, the MySDCE project in my apps folder. Shift right click, open command window here. It'll bring up the command prompt. It should not then automatically take us F drive, apps. My STC, wherever you have your My STC. It could be on the desktop, that's fine. But uh, I've got a copy of that on my flash drive. We'll do Cordova build so that it um, so that it, it uh, processes all of these new changes and updates our code. Yes. I'm copying it instead of cutting it. I'm leaving a copy of those things there just uh, to leave that project intact. And then I'm adding that stuff to my new project. Cutting it would be fine because you probably still have a copy of it on another folder. So Cordova space build. Do Cordova build, let that process. And I believe, uh, I believe this project has the Cordova web browser. So I think to run a quick test of it when this is done, I'm going to do Cordova run browser. I think I think that'll work. If it doesn't, we'll do Cordova run Android or Cordova emulate Android. That's how we now have to test if this pouch thing works because now it's part of the on device ready and on device ready only fires when we're in an app environment, not on a plain old run Firefox or run Chrome because that's not an app, it's a web browser. This might take a moment because we added a bunch of new code. While I'm waiting for that, um, I'll just uh, leave my code up here. I'm sorry, how do you open that again? Like in the... the folder? Yes. You want to hold on the keyboard, shift, and then right click the folder. Or the keyboard. The keyboard. The keyboard. Shift. Or oh, the control one? No, the shift. Okay, shift. Hold on, shift, and then uh, right click. That's right. Um, or C now, C now. Okay.
So if yours finished before me, then try to do Cordova Run Browser, or Cordova Run Android, or Cordova Emulate Android, whatever your case may be. Okay, let's see. So mine finished. Cordova run browser. Okay, so the project is running in the Cordova browser, uh, my class list, that pops open, I'm going to add some data here. Add class, get the feedback, the CRN already exists, oh, I already did that one, uh, class 555. Add class, class added, show classes. There we go, some classes I want to edit. And click edit. Update class. And so what was working last week as a plain HTML uh, project. Now we've added it, we've integrated it into our, into our app. It was about migrating code from that app into the right places into this project. It needs a little bit, of course, of uh, design work and such, but functionally I'm able to add data to the database. If you manage to get this to run on your device, That'll be very cool because then it's going to be permanent data that's being saved to the app itself uh, rather than to a web browser. So I'm going to do that and then we'll take a break. I'm going to do Cordova Run Android. I want to see it on my real device. That'll take a moment. So if you got it to work, great. If not, we're going to take a break. We'll make sure everyone's code is, is working and then we'll go on. At 7.25, we'll be back at 7.35 and we'll see what else we can do.